Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at timers. In this video, we're going to look at another feature of the timer system, which is called a timer capture. So what a capture does is an event that is external, <clears throat> either via a pin or some software on the MCU that you manually assert, you grab the current value of the timer <clears throat> and you store it in one of the capture compare registers. So this is where we get the CCR uh, terminology. So it's capture compare register. We use the same register as we do when we do a compare. <clears throat> it's just that you either put the timer into a compare or a capture mode. So capture means we're gonna grab the value of the timer and put it into here. Now what's neat about a capture is that external, external transitions can cause this. Uh, so you can have a signal that comes into a pin of the MCU or the MCU sometimes can be routed to internal signals. <clears throat> and basically you say, okay, when that edge happens, I'm going to grab the value of the counter. And you use a capture to try to measure the, dis the difference between time. So you try to say, I'm going to have a signal that's transitioning and I'm going to measure the difference between the edges and I'll figure out <clears throat> you know, what its duty cycle is or I'll figure out its period. And so it's a measurement tool as opposed to a compare, which is where you're trying to generate an, an event on a basic interval or an interval that you choose. <clears throat> In a capture, what you're doing is you're trying to measure the time dif difference between two events. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, remember, you use the capture compare register, so you share it amongst uh, the compares, but you can only do one or the other. And so there's a bit within the CCTL register, the capture compare control register called cap. And that's how you're gonna tell it to go into capture mode. And then you also have a signal, a bunch of settings, but one of the more important ones is trying to figure out which input is going to actually trigger the capture. So the CCI bit is what does that. <clears throat> and then you also have a mode, which allows you to say, I can be sensitive to rising edges, falling edges, or both. Uh, or both, okay? And so if you look at the capture control register, you'll notice that here's the cap, and this is the big one. By default, you're in compare mode. That's why we didn't have to set up this bit when we were doing cap uh, compares. But if we want to use capture, we have to turn this to a one or set it to a one. Once you do that, a whole bunch of other settings come into play. So first and foremost, your capture compare input, you can choose between two signals, CCI A and B, and these are, can be routed to pins on the MCU. You have to check your device-specific data sheet. Or you can actually route them to either ground or VCC. <clears throat> and you might say, why in the world would I ever do that? It turns out that this gives you the ability to manually trigger a capture because you can basically set this up to, to switch back and forth between these two and cause your own transitions. And that's what we'll do as an example here. Uh, you also have CM, which is capture mode, and that is, uh, you can have no capture, which you wouldn't use, <laughs> or you can capture on the rising edge, capture on the falling edge, or capture on both edges. And then you have other settings, which you can do things like have an automatic output that <clears throat> basically toggles or resets whenever these events happen. And of course, you can, if you want, have the flags be generated. So when a tr uh, capture occurs, you can have, you know, Trigger the flag, the flag asserts, and you can trigger an interrupt. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. But let's do, let's do an example where we use this. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a program where when I press the button, I want to generate a capture, and I'm going to do this just so I can see how this actually works. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to sit there and press the button and have and be able to view what gets put into the capture compare register in the debugger. So that means that I have to actually break the program. And so I wanna set the, the timer to run as very, very slow so that I can actually see, you know, like I'll, I'll break it, look at the count value that's put into here. And then if I come back a couple seconds later, <clears throat> I wanna be able to break it again. So run and break again, and then see a higher value and actually kind of watch this counter count up. So to do that, we need a slow clock. <clears throat> so in this example, let's choose a clock and let's divide it down by eight. And that's going to give us a four kilohertz clock into the timer. And if we put this in continuous mode and run in the 16-bit timer length, that'll give us an overflow of, you know, 
I don't know, many seconds. It's something like uh, 16 seconds. So that's plenty of time to do a handful of these captures and actually see the counter count up. What we are gonna do is if we wanna generate this internally, I don't have anything routed to the, the bits or I haven't really looked into that. So I just wanna do this in software. I wanna create an edge that causes the capture to occur. <clears throat> so we gotta put cap as one for capture mode. We gotta put sensitive to both edges. And the reason that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the capture, compare capture input select bit settings. We're gonna initially set them to ground <clears throat> and that's one zero. And the reason that that's important is because the way that they recommend that you generate these with software is you come into the least significant bit of the CCIS and you toggle it in the interrupt service routine. And if you do that, what happens is that if you're at a ground, you're gonna to toggle that least significant bit to a one and the capture system will see VCC. And then if you toggle it again, you'll see is ground. And you can actually make your own edges. So then each time you have a cap, uh, interrupt, <clears throat> you cause that edge. And if you put the capture mode to both edges, then that causes the capture system to actually get it, actually cause it to go, okay? So let's do it. All right, let's fire up CCS. All right, and here we go. We're gonna do file, new CCS project. Uh, we are doing timers, so let's do timer. Uh, excuse me, ASM, and then timer, <clears throat> and then capture, and then we'll do uh, software, CCR0, main.l only. Okay, so here I come. Uh, what I want to do is I want to have this event occur. I want the capture to occur when I press SW1. So I'm going to set up a port interrupt, and I'm not even going to use the flags from the capture system. I'm just going to set everything up, and then when I press the button, I'm going to, I'm going to manually cause a transition on the capture input, and that'll cause the timer value to be stored into the CCR register. We'll use CCR zero because that's, why not? Uh, but let's do it. Okay, so set up the ports, and I wanna have, let's just bring the LED in too, so that every time you fire one of these interrupts, it, when, every time you press the button, it'll cause an interrupt, and then that interrupt, we'll, we'll toggle the LED just so we know that something's happening. So let's go ahead and set up the, uh, the LED, so P1 DIR, so this is set P1 bit zero to output, and that's LED one. Then we'll do bit set or bit, bit clear, and then we'll initialize it to P1 out, and we'll put LED one equals off initially. <clears throat> okay, now let's set up the ports for uh, switch one. So I'm gonna do that, so I'm gonna bit clear, that B, and now uh, switch one is on port four bit one. So I'm going bit one and I got port four DIR and then we're going to do set port four dot one to input. And this is SW1. And then I'm going to do bit set dot B and I need a resistor here for the pull up. So I need bit one. I'm going to do P four REN resistor enable. So I'm going to do enable resistor and then I'm going to do bit set dot B. I'm going to do, make sure you got those masks in there, bit one, and then this is going to be P4 out, so that's set to pull up, and that's the secondary function of P4 out, and then we're going to use a interrupt on this, so let's do a bit set dot on bit one of P4 IES to set the sensitivity, so IRQ sensitivity to high to low, okay? And then that should get the switch set up. So let's go ahead and turn on the digital IO system. So I lock out PM5. This is in the PM5 CTL0 register. So that's turn on <coughs> digital IO. Okay, so that's that. And now we can do, uh, <coughs> let's set up the IRQ for switch one. And this is gonna, what we need to do here is the following. So let's do bit set dot B, let's do the local enable, which is bit one in P four IE. So this is local enable for switch one, which is port four bit one. And then we'll enable globals. So we'll do enable global and that's for maskables. <clears throat> and then let's clear that flag. So let's go bit clear dot B. 
And then we're going to do bit one, and then we'll clear the flag in P four I F G. Okay. All right. So then clear the flag. All right. So we got this. So we're going to, you know, basically all we've done so far is what we've already done with ports. So we have the LEDs ready, the switch is ready. Uh, we've got an IRQ set up, and now let's set up the timer for this. So set up timer. And first thing we need to do, as always, is do a bit set. And now we're doing 16-bit operations because we're back to configuration registers uh, for regular peripherals. We need to do the TB clear in the TB0CTL. So this is clear, or let's reset timer. It's actually clear timer. <clears throat> That's the recommended first thing to do. And now let's tell it to use a clock. So we're going to do tbssel underscore underscore a clock. And that's also in the tb0 CTL register. So choose a clock. Now we got to divide this little buddy. So I'm going to use this mass that I looked up, uh, which is called the ID bits. But then if you go underscore underscore eight, it'll put it in the, it'll have the mask bits for a divide by eight in that first divider stage. That's cool. All right, TB0 CTL, and that is going to be divide by four in first stage, and that'll get us a, the four kilohertz clock. Now let's put this buddy in continuous mode. So remember the mask for that is MC underscore underscore continuous, and that is again in TB0 CTL. Okay, so continue cont mode. <laughs> okay, so we got that. All right, so now the timer is set up and running, and now it's time to set up the capture. So now we're going to do set up, let's go uh, set up capture, and here we go. So what do we need to do? First and foremost, we need to put the timer compare capture thing, capture compare into capture mode. So I need to do a bit set.w, and there's absolutely a bit mask called cap, which is in the TB0CCTL0. Now this is the Timer B0, capture compare control register zero for the CCR zero register. And this puts in capture mode, and you can either do capture or compare, not two at the same time in the same register. And then what I need to do is I'm gonna set the sensitivity to both edges. So I'm gonna do CM underscore underscore both. And that's another mask I looked up in the in the uh, header file. And these are, makes it really readable. So TB0, CCTL zero, this is, both edge sensitivity <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do and that's the sensitivity of when to do the capture and then finally I need to do uh, put the source of the the source of the input signal for the capture to ground and they happen to have a, a mask for that which is CCIS which are the bits you set and then you do ground <clears throat> and what that's going to do is this it is going to come in here and put CCIS at one zero and the reason that's important is because we're going to, in our interrupt service routine, we're going to toggle that least significant bit to make it go between ground and BCC. And we'll see that in the interrupt service team. Okay, so that's in TB0, not even close, TB0, CCTL0. <clears throat> and uh, input signal equals ground. Okay? All right. Now, what are we going to do when we get this register, let's go ahead and also move it into a, a CPU register. Okay, so we'll do this. Let's clear out R4 and, and let's just, we'll grab it. It'll automatically take the timer and put it into the CCR0 register. But let's go ahead and also move that into R4 in our, in our interrupt service routine, just so we see that it moves somewhere else. And now we're ready for our silly main loop, which is main, jump main. So. <clears throat> there we have it. All right, now let's do an interrupt service routine. And remember, we're going to do an interrupt service routine for the switch, not the capture, because we want the capture, or we want to push the switch, push the button, and we want it to manually, in software, cause a transition on the signal that triggers the interrupt, okay? So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to do ISR underscore switch one, so we remember what we're doing. And then I want to do, let's toggle the LED first. So XOR.B, and then we'll do uh, bit, pound bit zero in P1 out. And that's going to do toggle LED. And then what we'll do is, now we're ready to toggle 
this the input bit. So I'm going to do XOR dot W, and I'm going to do CC IS zero in the TB zero CCTL zero register, and that's going to be. And what I'm doing there is CC IS zero is a mask which which toggles which is corresponding to the least significant bit in CCIS. So now I flip that between ground and VCC and vice versa over and over and over every time I do it. So now that is going to cause the capture. And now what I do is go ahead and now that the capture has happened, let's move that into, I'm gonna move uh, TB0, CCR0, which is where the timer was put, into R4, so store off value. And then let's go ahead and clear the flag. But remember the flag we're clearing is the port four bit one flag of the switch. So that's in P four I of G. So that's clear flag. And now we return, okay? All right, so let's see, let's get this straightened up here. Typing pretty fast, but blah, 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 blah. That, looks, that looks close enough to <laughs> at least assemble it. So now let's come down here and let's go to our interrupt vectors and let's initialize the vector table for uh, the switch, port four, which is, so int 22, and then this is P4 interrupt, P4 vector. And then what we're gonna do is put do dot short and we'll put our ISR underscore S1, okay? All right, a lot of type in there. Let's go ahead and assemble this and see how many errors we have. Okay, no big deal. So let's go see which error we have. Okay, mo.w, can't have that. We got move, <laughs> move.w. Okay, let's go ahead and assemble that again. Another error, bit. So it's, oh, yeah, I had a, there we go. So let's go find that one. Okay, so I got that right there. So let's save that and fire up this little buddy. Okay, so now it's, it's gonna go. Okay, so if I go, what I wanna do is I wanna go down, I'm gonna set a breakpoint in my interrupt service routine, but I wanna do it at like the last instruction. So I'm gonna do it right here. So now what's gonna happen is when I run this and I press the button, it'll fire the interrupt service routine for port four bit one, and it'll go into the interrupt service routine, grab the value and then store it off and then stop. And so I should be able to stop this thing. Now the counter is, and I, I can look at R4 here to try to see, and so watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press the button. And what I notice is, okay, LED1 toggled, and it changed. So now look at what's in R4, 41E. Go ahead and run it again, and I'm gonna hit it again, 48E6. Okay, hit it again, just the button. See how it's counting up? Okay, so it looks like it's working. But now let's go look at what the actual timer value is. So come down here, scroll down, and get into the timer system. And you'll see you have TB0, CTL, C, all this stuff. TB0R is actually the timer value. TBCCR0 is the value that is stored from the timer. So now watch this. Now it's been a few seconds since I've ran it. So if I go run, boom. <clears throat> if I go run and boom. Now it's, it's counting way, it's counting, it's further along, but I can see that it's counting and I'm storing it. So I go boom, and then look at that, I run, hit the button. Okay, so you see how that's working? So it's pretty simple uh, and, and kind of powerful if you wanna take a time measurement. So, and, and in this one, this just showed you how to do a software, uh, force a manual compare, or excuse me, capture by doing a software uh, manipulation of this CCIS bit. Okay, you did it, congratulations. And that is Timer Captures. As always, remember to support my channel by subscribing and see ya.